Hello, I'm Laura Rebelke, and today on Azure Friday, I have John Sebastian Bruner, who is a PM on the Azure Stream Analytics team. And he's going to walk through some of the great new updates that we're uh, releasing and delivering with Azure Stream Analytics. So, John Sebastian, what would you like to show us today? Hi, I have a lot of features to show today. Uh, we recently announced that we built a few features from time management. Uh, for example, we have a new feature called Substream that enables to show different timelines uh, for different IoT devices. Okay. Uh, we have also a feature called Session Windows, uh, completely new, and a few new things coming on IoT Edge uh, with Stream Analytics now running custom code. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So before we get into the different features, give me a quick summary. What is Stream Analytics? So Stream Analytics is basically a product that allows you to run uh, large-scale analytics for your real-time data. Okay. And in a very simple way. Okay. So we we foster developer for, uh, productivity. So you run SQL, everything is managed for you, and you can basically start a pipeline in less than five minutes. Great. And so you're basically able to just uh, start running SQL queries over data that's in motion. Exactly. That's and after you click on run, and they run 24-7 for you. OK. Well, let's see what you've been announcing at the recent build conference and since then. OK. So first, let's talk about um, the advanced time management and, and the substream feature. But I just want to show a little context, and because we are talking about time management and time distortion, mm -hmm. uh, I need some slide for that. So I will show you, for example, uh, in the world of IoT, you know, uh, you can think like the ideal case is all my devices are synchronized, exactly same time on the clock at the milliseconds, and basically the the device uh, data arrive in the cloud at the same time for all the device. Right. Looks wonderful, but right. of course that never happened. That's and not real world. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened actually instead of having this nice aligned clock is uh, you have this time skew and basically all the device send their data at their own pace. And basically, if you want to make any decision here, you have to reorder these events. And what it means is you have to wait for the events. Right. And what you will see, it's some delay because you have to wait for the latest clock, basically. And then you can take decision and send some alerts. And typically, when you're using ASA or Azure Stream Analytics to issue some kind of an alert, you want to be able to issue the alert, alert as soon as possible. Exactly. And what you're saying is, <clears throat> we've had to wait for all of that data to be submitted mm. up to ASA to make that alert yeah. happen. And in some case, you have to, because if you want to combine the data of all these devices together and make a query that is cross-device, you will have to. Right. But if you just want an alert on one device, uh, why not just looking at this time clock, uh, specific clock? And that is new feature, and the beauty of it, it's just one additional keyword here. Okay. You add the over keyword, you said how you partition your device, and you will be able to look at them independently. So under the cover, we basically run as many queries, I mean, it's more efficient than that, that your number of devices, and it mm -hmm. just looks like one beautiful, simple query. And you can see there's no alerts. Basically, whenever it arrives in the, clock, in the cloud, uh, we run the alerts uh, based on the time clock of this particular device. That's great. Very useful. Very useful. OK, and what else do you have? Uh, so we also introduced a new window. Uh, so before, we only had uh, fixed time windows. So we have like the tumbling windows, sliding windows, and uh, also, uh, hopping windows. And now what we have is a new window called session windows. Okay. And it's super useful when you actually don't know how long will be your windows. And I'm thinking about uh, if you want to do click stream analytics or log analytics. Or in this example, we are looking at uh, um, Twitter streams, uh, just to see how many tweets we have on particular topics. And we want just to group them uh, by the density. So when there's a gap, we just close the session, and we wait for the next one to come. OK. And in terms of retail and click analytics, I mean, you can imagine all the scenario you can do. And again, uh, it's as simple as, as uh, the other windows. Uh, we just have the group by uh, keyword here, a new keyword called session windows, mm -hmm. and nothing else, uh, nothing else new. It's just the same kind of group by and windows you, you know from before. OK, great, great. All right, what else do you want to show us? Uh, we have also a lot of new features on the edge. Yes, yeah, so what, talk to us first before we start going into the edge. Uh, we've been hearing quite a bit around IoT Edge. What is IoT Edge? So IoT Edge is the ability to run uh, some analytics uh, on devices. And when I say devices, it could be my laptop, but it's more like IoT device, uh, like a connected car uh, on a man manufacturing floor. You want to run on some robots, or you want to run on an offshore rig some, on some boats. Basically, uh, whenever you have some uh, limited connectivity, or you have so much data that you cannot send it to the cloud. 
Right, right. And so you want to maybe do some of the analytics closer to where that data is being generated. And it gives you that, that ability to lower the latency on doing that query and analytics, but also sustain some of the um, uh, uh, occasional connectivity concerns that you might have. Exactly. Okay. And, and, and then you use the cloud uh, to use uh, the power of uh, the cloud uh, to process a large amount of data coming from thousands or millions of devices. Okay. So and with Azure Stream Analytics, you know, we've had the IoT Edge available for some time in preview, and Azure Stream Analytics has been available virtually from the beginning. Exactly. Okay. So talk to me, how do you deploy and manage uh, Azure Stream Analytics on the Edge? Uh, so it's very simple and can show you uh, like the, the main steps. So basically, as you know, you can create a new job in the portal for Stream Analytics, mm -hmm. and we just have a, an option to choose between Cloud and Edge. Okay. So you can choose, and then the workflow is exactly the same. You create your input, your output, your query, and it's exactly the same language. So you write these SQL queries, and if you want to run it on the cloud, because uh, you know there's not too much latency issue, you can run them. When you realize it may need, uh, may need to be closer to the device, mm -hmm. uh, you can take this query and run it uh, on the edge on the container. So you virtually have the same Azure Stream Analytics that you can run either on the edge or in the cloud. Yeah. That's great. And right. uh, we continuously add feature here because it's a feature in preview. And uh, we announced that build, for example, we had a custom code feature. Okay. Uh, so th that's very interesting because when you think about the world of manufacturing, uh, there's a lot of complex message in, uh, coming from the robots and the machine, and we want to be sure that people can have uh, can use reuse some library or can use some complex code to understand uh, what happened there, process it, also use all the power of the SQL from Stream Analytics and send the data to the cloud for further analytics or training a machine learning model. Okay. Okay. What else would you like to show us then? Act can actually show you yes. how to do that. So actually, I'll show you here, we can create a job in the cloud, okay. but actually we have a plugin for Visual Studio. And when we talk about custom code, I think it's probably the best way to show it to do that. Um, so I just have a project here in, um, in Visual Studio. It's a, a Stream Analytics project. And basically, uh, what we can do is to test the project and uh, deploy it when it's ready. And I just have some data. Uh, and I, uh, from some robots, and I just want to run a select star just to start. Mm -hmm. And I can run locally. I can be completely disconnected for deployment. I don't even need to be connected to Azure, or I can start even without uh, connecting uh, to my account. Mm -hmm. And it just runs the same kind of algorithm we have in the cloud. And what you can see, uh, I just run the query here, is uh, basically the output here uh, of a sample file. So I just did a select star on some data coming from some robots. And you can see it's very hard to understand. We, uh, we have some data like x, y, but, uh, and some data seems to be encoded. Mm -hmm. And actually what happened here is the manufacturer of the robot have a library uh, to understand that and help you to, 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 to take some decision based on this data. And what we did in this project is actually uh, importing the library uh, from the, the robot manufacturer. And you can see I have here my uh, C-sharp class uh, project uh, that I have a library coming from uh, my uh, manufacturer. And I can also use that library in my own code. Mm -hmm. uh, so very simple code here, but uh, sorry, uh, I'm not opening the right one. <laughs> uh, the screen is a little small here. Uh, but just using that library, understand everything. And basically what you can do like here is to understand um, when we need an adjustment on the, on the angle because we, we start to have some, um, some problem. Uh, we also can check the health of the robot, uh, ch check when the battery is off uh, and it to be, uh, to be changed. And everything is based on that library with a little kind of customization from the particular factory. Because, you know, different environments, they right. mean different code. So you cannot just have one library for the whole world. And uh, you can set breakpoints, uh, test all your query uh, before actually running, running it to the, uh, to the edge or running it to the cloud. And maybe, maybe let me show you what it looks after, just the full query. So I already typed it here because it will be a little long. But here I, I just call my, my uh, custom code function. And as we have in the cloud for JavaScript function, it's just one keyword, UDF, uh, dot the name of your function. Okay. And then you can extend the SQL with the function you, you wrote in C-sharp. And then you can run it locally. It runs the, the kind of miniature uh, stream engine. 
And then you can see the result. We decoded like all the information, added our custom logic, and we can see if the robot needs battery service, uh, power consumption check, or arm adjustment. Uh, so using custom code and, custom cus uh, and, and customization uh, from this particular factory to understand uh, the robot. But the beauty of that is now it's tested. Uh, I can actually deploy to thousands of devices in a few clicks. Okay, great. Um, so I can deploy to the cloud here, but I want to show you uh, the experience in IoT Edge. Basically, uh, if you go to, uh, to the IoT Hub portal, you have this new IoT Edge device um, uh, blade here. And what you can do, I have a few devices here, but just to show you how easy to, to deploy a streamatics job. I don't have like thousands of devices to do that. I will just do it on one mm -hmm. device. Okay. Uh, so I just need to, to click here. But it will be a very similar flow for, for, uh, for thousands of devices. It's exactly the same. Uh, you just target your device, and it's as simple as that. And so I already deployed uh, this one here, but uh, I want to show you how it easy it is to add this job. For example, uh, I click here, and I just click on Add Streamatics Module. Okay. So it's fully integrated in the portal. And, and then what you can do is just to select the job. So that's the job I, j I just created. You click here. It, it's calling an API, uh, uh, creating a Docker container for this job. Mm -hmm and uh, sending all the information uh, to this deployment for IoT Edge. OK, so it's sending it out to the Edge. Yeah, uh, not exactly, no. I need to click on Next, Next. But okay. basically, that's yes. what it's doing. Uh, so here, uh, I can click on Next, um, uh, specify some root routes uh, for my device. Here, I just have some simulator. And after, I, I send the route to, uh, to my ASA module. I click on Next. I can always like, uh, see exactly what the deployment mm -hmm. looks like. And actually, when I click on Submit, uh, that's when it sends uh, the uh, deployment and my module to all my devices. Great. And here it was one, but imagine if it's like a, a full factory, it could be hundreds or thousands of robots. Thousands and thousands, exactly. OK. Great. Is there anything else you wanted to show us? So there's, there's some feature we have some uh, quite a while now. And just want to remind people, because we, we, we keep improving it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about geospatial. Um, so, so basically, uh, in Streamatics, in addition to time windows, we also have native geospatial support. Uh, so you can have queries that are based on distance, or mm -hmm. uh, you can trigger some uh, events when uh, something goes outside the boundary, or something like this, geofencing and everything. Great. And again, it's completely integrated uh, within the SQL language. Uh, so it's always few more lines, uh, uh, a few lines of code to design this kind of powerful queries. And that similar syntax of SQL that it we have with all of the other ASA queries. Exactly. Great, great. Well, thank you, thank you. It was really great learning all about Azure Stream Analytics with you today and some of the new features and deployment op options that we have with IoT Edge. It's very exciting to see that stuff emerging. Um, where can we go to learn more? So we have our website, uh, Azure Stream Analytics on Azure, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the documentation. And if you listen to our Twitter feed, uh, we always post the new update over there. Yeah, with lots of great tutorials and samples, and people can go learn more, just pull down those samples and start playing. Yes. Great, great. Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, we've been learning all about Azure Stream Analytics today on Azure Friday.